this is 1 Corinthians 12, 25 to 31 from the message. The way God designed our bodies is a model for understanding our lives together as a church. Every part depends on every other part. The parts we mention and the parts we don't. The parts we see and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. If one part flourishes, every other part enters into the exuberance. You're Christ's body, that's who you are. You must never forget this. Only as you accept your part of that body does your part mean anything. You're familiar with some of the parts that God has formed in his church, which is his body. Apostles, prophets, teachers, miracle workers, healers, helpers, organizers, those who pray in tongues. But it's obvious by now, isn't it, that Christ's church is a complete body and not a gigantic and un unidimensional. I never heard that. <laughs> it's not all apostle, not all prophet, not all miracle worker, not all healer, not all prayer in tongues, not all interpreter of tongues, and yet some of you keep competing for so-called important parts. But now I want to lay out a far better way for you, way of love. Thank you. Thank you all for the three of you, four of you. Each one of these is a message in itself, hasn't it? And I hope that the Lord's already blessing you as uh, you're receiving what he's saying. Um, all of it makes me question, who do you think you are? Do we all see that program? I love it. But who do I think I am? And the passage that Miriam read from Psalm 139 emphasizes the fact that every single person born into the universe is unique. You are unique. No one else like you. God created you himself for a purpose. That blows your mind, doesn't it? How often we look, look at other people and think, oh, I wish I could be like that. Or, or you look at things that are wrong in your life and think, oh, I wish I wasn't like that. God made you who you are. And you know, he created us with such love and care. He cares for each one of us. And it shows us that we don't have to try to be somebody else. Because in Christ, we are somebody. We're already somebody. We're the person he made us to be a unique creation of God with a particular, a very special life message that no other being in the whole universe can quite duplicate. Think about it. He created you for a purpose that no one else can fulfill. God has a custom-made plan for each individual life, for each one of us, and he's working in each one of us personally to perfect his plan and to bring it to completion. Like that lovely crown that we've seen. It looks a mess sometimes. Our life, lives are messy, aren't they? Families are messy. Everything's messy without God. But he sees the other side. And God never loses sight of our uniqueness. And as a church, we would do well to recognise this. Because if we do, and everybody takes their part and accepts who they are in Christ, spiritual effectiveness will increase and abound. And every Christian needs to understand that they can be themselves. Be who you are. Be who God created you to be. He wants us to use our creativity and our uniqueness to turn enemies into friends, to turn adversities into adventures, and to turn evil into good. So you are unique. In Genesis 1, 
We read that when after God had created man, God saw all that he had made and it was very good. God does not pronounce you good because of your accomplishments, but because of who he made you to be, the real <coughs> you, the unique person that you are, and you are good in God's eyes. You will always have your standing before God as his child. Your failings will never take that away. This is who you are, his child. You don't need to try to earn his love. You already have it. Your work is just an assignment from God. Don't ever allow your successes become the source of your feeling of well-being. And don't allow your failings to make you look down on yourself. Ephesians 2 tells us that we are not saved by good works, but that we are created for them. And so we see that God has a plan for you and for me that no one else can fulfill. How can you know the will of God for your life? What are the good works that God has prepared for you? If you want to know what God wants you to do, ask him, and he will gladly tell you that he is always ready to give a bountiful supply of wisdom to all who ask him. He will not resent it. But when you ask him, be sure that you really expect him to tell you. You know, God isn't just guiding you from outside of you, but when we've entrusted our lives to him, his Holy Spirit lives within us. And we have a wonderful relationship with him. So to know his will, we need to surrender our personal desires to him and to meditate on his word. It's that wonderful scripture, I think a lot of us learned as, child, as children, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. How can I know God's will for me? Ask him. Turn to God in prayer and ask him what he wants you to be doing. But you know, just a little word of warning. We must stand together. Collectively, we are the body of Christ, as Linda read from 1 Corinthians. Every part of the body is needed. Every part is absolutely essential. But do we recognise this when we meet and fellowship together? In Revelation, we read that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Don't let's do the work of Satan accusing and criticising one another. God's will is for us to stand against Satan. Jesus, by his death and resurrection, disarmed the principalities and powers of darkness. So why should we go against this wonderful work? That person you may be criticising or accusing is right now being transformed into the likeness of Christ. It's not our place to point the finger and criticise. We are called to love and to encourage one another in our faith in Christ. So what is his plan for you? To bring glory to God. Isaiah 43 says that God created us for his glory. He created us to extend his kingdom by bringing the light of the world into every situation. He created us to have fellowship with him. We exist to display the greatness of Christ, to know him and to make him known. So we're going to stand and we're going to sing our next song. And as we do this, let's rededicate our lives to him. We're going to sing, take my life and let it be consecrated Lord to thee. <laughs>